Donating your spare CPU cycles is one of the coolest things you can do and help aiding the fight against COVID-19. I'm Jake Garcia with Modus Create, and today I'm going to walk you through installing Rosetta at home for the Mac. We'll begin by downloading and installing the Rosetta client on your machine. I'll show you some of the configuration settings so that you can set up Rosetta at home to only compute when you're not using your computer. And finally, I'll show you how to exclude Rosetta at home data from your Time Machine backup so you're not wasting precious disk space on your Time Machine disks. The first thing we're going to need to do is open up a browser. In the address bar, we'll type in boinc.bakerlab.org. Now to download the client, we're going to need to click on a few links. First, join Rosetta at home. Next, the green download button. And finally, the download BOINC green download button. Now, depending on your settings, your computer may prompt you for permission. We're going to click allow. And then after it downloads, we're going to navigate to our downloads folder. And finally, open up the BOINC client folder. To install, we're going to double click the installer. And then if your computer prompts you to open it through a security warning, we're going to press open. Now, once the installer opens, we're going to walk through the install workflow. We're going to click continue throughout the installer prompts. And then we're going to go ahead and click on agree on the software license agreement. And finally, we're going to click on the install button. To allow the installer to move forward, our computer is going to prompt us for our user account and password. Now, this is your local account that we're going to enter the password for. We'll enter the password and the installer will run. This might take a few minutes. Go ahead, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. All right, it looks like it worked. We're gonna go ahead and close the installer. Now the client's gonna automatically go ahead and launch for us. This is good. Now it's gonna pop up a dialogue that's gonna prompt you to select the project to attach the client to. We're gonna scroll down a list till we hit the R's and click on Rosetta at home. We'll select it and then press next. Now, if you don't have an account, you're gonna to wanna to register a new account in this dialog. The reasons for doing this is to allow you to track workloads that your computer has completed. This is also very useful if you have multiple computers that you're using to contribute to this project. Since I'm an existing user, I'm gonna go ahead and type in my credentials here. I'll go ahead and press next and it's gonna initiate communication with the project. Once it's completed, the finish button will appear. We'll go ahead and press that. And what you're gonna see initially is that the client is gonna execute some benchmarks. We're gonna go ahead and let the computer do what it needs to do right here. Essentially what the benchmarks do is it measures how fast your computer can actually process so that it can allocate and request workloads accordingly. After the benchmarks are done running, you'll see that it's waiting to retrieve information and eventually get to a point where it's downloading work from the server. Now, you can go ahead and just kind of minimize the client here, but if you want to dive in deeper, we're going to need to change this view. In order to look at the details for the clients, we're going to need to click on View and click on Advanced View. Now, this is going to go ahead and pop up a dialog with a few tabs. The first tab is going to be notices. This is where Rosetta at Home promotes any news. For example, in this message, they explain that they're, also, they're fighting COVID-19 and also that they have enabled the Linux ARM platform to join the fight. This only is important if there's new information. Now the projects tab has all the projects that you've attached your client to. Now we only connected Rosetta at Home and that's okay. So we're going to see one client here. This is where you can suspend the work that's being performed or resume it. So if I click suspend, we'll see that the status over here, let me make this wider. We'll see that the status shows that it's suspended. We can click resume and that will go ahead and allow the workload to continue. If you want to track the progress for Rosetta at home in a much finer detail, you're going to click on tasks. And here we see that the tasks are downloading. Once the tasks have completed downloading, you'll start to see them showing up as running. And there we go. The computer is executing workloads in accordance to the work units that have been sent over. So out of the box, Rosetta at home is going to execute in a way that doesn't necessarily get in your way. But what if you want finer control? 
To do that, we're going to need to open the Computer Preferences pane. So I'm going to click on Options and then Computing Preferences. Now that pops up the Computing Preferences dialog. I'm going to move it to the right so that we can kind of look back and forth and look at how this is running and affecting our work. Rosetta at Home is going to allocate all of your virtual and physical CPU cores and 100% of their available computing time, but only if your actual usage is below the 25% threshold. Let's say you open up Microsoft Word or Chrome. Well, Chrome's a memory hog. And from that perspective, this client will start to use less CPU cycles. But if you want finer grain control, what you can do is say, okay, I only want to allow 50% of the available CPU cores and only 50% perhaps of their CPU times. And so what I'll do is I'll press save and it's going to go ahead and now limit the amount of available resources, the available CPU cores. This is actually an eight core machine and we'll see that it actually reduced it down to 50%. So we only have half of our cores actually executing. So I'll go back to the computing preferences pane. I'll move it to the right again so we can look side by side. And from there, I'll go ahead and just say, well, I'll leave it here for now. If you wanted to have much finer grain control, click on daily schedule. From there, it's going to give you an option to allow the computing to only happen within specific time frames. So if let's say I end my workday at 6 p.m. Using the 24 hour clock, I can say only compute between 18 hours or 1800 hours for you military folks. And let's say I start my workday at eight o'clock in the morning. So between the hours of 1800 and eight o'clock, this thing will execute within that time frame. And if I press save, that's gonna go ahead and persist my settings. But for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to go ahead and press cancel. Now out of the box, the BOINC client data directory will be backed up in Time Machine. We wanna exclude it because it's not really important to back this data up and it's quite large. So what we're gonna to need to do is add the data directory to the Time Machine exclude list. So to do this, we're gonna open up System Preferences, click on Time Machine, and once the dialog opens up, we're gonna click on Options, and then we're gonna click the plus button. Now, this will likely open up your Documents directory or something outside of the directory that we need to go to. So to navigate to where we need to go to, we're gonna go ahead and type in on your keyboard, Shift-Command-G, and in the dialog that shows up, we'll highlight the text, and from here, we're gonna type in forward slash library with a capital L. We're going to go ahead and press go. And then once that pops up, we're going to single click here. Double click is the wrong action here. We want to make sure we do single click. So we're going to single click application support and then B O I N C data. From here, we're going to click exclude. We're going to click save. And now time machine will not back up the client data. Thanks so much for watching. If you found this useful, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel and or sharing this with your network. Be safe and be healthy.